All right, what are we working on today? These are uh, ER models. I bought them from, uh, from eBay. I haven't bought stuff from eBay in a long while. These have been sitting uh, on my bench for quite a while. So I bought them from an eBay seller called Trains. Uh, buy it now, because I don't win the auctions anymore. So, ER models, they are pretty good. And these are in pretty good shape. They have um, these imitation knuckle couplers here, which are okay. Uh, they will work with the micro train stuff. And I've got all the ladders and well, all the couplers for sure. And uh, the two horns, which is really nice to have. So uh, ER models, um, you'll see when I open them up, they are really, really cheap uh, China-made stuff. But when you put them together, the way they work together, it is actually quite amazing. This is a really good running model. Uh, the power pickups, they look flimsy and cheap, but they work very well. These things, they never stall. I uh, got the B unit as well. The same way, a bunch of I bought a bunch of B unit uh, lately. It's got the two ladders, no horns, of course, and um, the undoing of the uh, Baldwin um, railroad people call them sharks. The undoing of the railroad sharks is because they had um, pneumatic uh, MU systems. And Alco and EMD use an electrical MU system. So they could not be mated with the EMD or the Alco. So uh, they were good pullers though. Uh, PRR had the most of them and they were good pullers. And um, they wore them out and then they scrapped them. Uh, two of the New York Central uh, sharks, they were sold to Manon Galela. And they were sold to the DNH. Apparently, they're still around somewhere in the hangar, so I'd love to see them. Anyways, um, let's just start by removing the shell. I, I have two of these already. I like them a lot. I think you just pry on the sides and they come right out. Now you don't want to drop them too much. There you go. So you pry it on the sides and they come right out. A little piece that was loose there I don't know if that's really important I'm not gonna lose it and that doesn't look like a DCC board it looks like a very normal uh, DC board um, let's put them on the track and let's see uh, where we're at well maybe it is DCC because I'm looking at all these wires and if it's DCC and the DCC works, that would be good news. I'm going to pop this one open as well. And we'll stick it on the track and we'll see. Let's just see what happens when I stick it on the track. So 204B, I have no idea what that could mean. Almost got it. So yeah, everything looks uh, flimsy, and flimsy and cheap inside, but they work very well. They are more than the sum of their parts. Yeah, this could be a DCC. Let's go put them on the track and find out. Take this engine uh, off the track now. I've got the A unit on the track. Let's see just uh, if I go, go uh, select loco and then three. Let's just see what happens there. 
Well, I heard it click, so that's good. I'm going to go back to uh, 28 speed steps. I like to use the 128 speed steps now. Let's just see if I move forward. What happens? So nothing much, eh? Let's go on the program track just to see if I can contact the decoder. So we go program track, enter, and standard. suspense so manufacturer 153 and then the quarter version 8 so I can go online and get the instructions for this so set up address yes short address 003 perfect activate this address long address let me just check the number okay so it's uh oh 2004 was already programmed in there so perfect enter activate this address yes we're in good shape so from that point on we're going to see skip to everything else and then just escape again and then we're going to try address 2004, uh, select local 2004, enter, and then let's see if that works. Hmm, not looking great. I'm going to fool around with it for a bit, and then we'll see if I can get it to move. I got it to move. Um, this is a non-sound decoder, so there's no point in checking the bell and the whistle, but the headlight doesn't work. Uh, trying that doesn't work. However, I did get it to move. I'm uh, on 28 speed steps. I'm at uh, 20. So, um, and also it doesn't sound great. These, like I said before, are usually really good runners. So I'm speed step 20 out of 24, so that's a lot. So it definitely needs a good cleaning and lubrication. And the extra wires are there for um, lights from that little decoder. I see them hanging out there, and they are there. So I think I am going to do that at least. Already it's working better. I'm on speed step 4 now. So uh, yeah, definitely can use a lot of lubrication and cleaning. Yeah, speed step 4. So it's getting better. But you can tell it just doesn't sound great. Okay, let's try the B unit. So the B unit on speed step 1, it goes like crazy. And it doesn't sound very good either. So it's either stop or all the way. I'm going to do a factory reset on this just to see if that can help it. Factory reset on the NCE power cab is called the recovery program that's in your instructions. So you still go um, program track. And then you choose option 7. And that will do the recovery program. So it's working away. I mean, these decoders could be bad. Uh, so I paid 68 for the pair. Cosmetically, they're in great shape. So uh, you can expect that's uh, $34 each. You can expect to buy a locomotive for $34 that there would be something wrong with it. So that seemed to be successful. So we're going to escape all that. And 
then escape and then I remembered it 2005 let's see if that's going to work better now wow it's not that great so yeah it doesn't work at all um, maybe the wheels are dirty I don't know but uh, what I'm going to do I'm going to clean the wheels and then I'll get back to it and we'll see what happens I did it again when I uh, did the recovery program I erased the long address and that's why the locomotive wasn't responding so I redid the programming put the uh, the correct address in it and now it's responding fine um, you can tell it the gears are really dirty so it needs uh, definitely needs a good cleaning and then we'll see how that runs yeah I just wanted to show you that it does run but it needs a good cleaning for sure for sure so before I tackle uh, cleaning this uh, I just wanted to show you some of the details um, on the shell it is really quite beautiful it has all the uh, separately applied handrails and you can see there's little windows if you were on the doors every door has a little window if you were curious what was that plastic that fell when I opened it up it was just um, this window here for the door so I glued it back with some CA it's not going anywhere also handrails up here and these are the correct um, horns for it so I really lucked out with this I got all the ladders everything's there the B unit is the same story it's got the separately applied uh, handrails and windows so uh, all the ladders very lucky so I'll be cleaning these with my toothbrush and some dish soap and then this here I just just remembered how to open these it's a split frame so you just stack all these two screws here let me grab an appropriate screwdriver so you just remove that little uh, circuit board on top now I don't think the previous person that did oh by the way the um, the the little decoders it's TCS so I never had TCS decoders before TCS it stands for uh, train control uh, systems and they seem to be really good quality anyways I have no complaints about them now on the DC version uh, this uh, board it just comes right out easy peasy lemon squeezy but here it will be hardwired with the motor so you can't goof around too much with that but I can still get everything apart to clean it just uh, don't pull too hard on this so I think the installation was done pretty well oh look at that how neat is that because the these two pins conduct electricity to uh, to your motor so that is easy so if a guy wants to use the same um, LED here it should be possible but I have to disconnect it from uh, the track feed so that might be too much work I'll think about that what I might end up doing is just adding my own LED we'll see I'll see which way is easier this was well done uh, take a note here he broke the circuit here he wired his yellow and blue uh, leads exactly where they should be on the circuit board reused the original LED for some reason it did uh, burn out so I'm going to supply my own and we'll see uh, how far I can get with that I'm going to resolder my old uh, LED resolder my own LED to it then we'll see where I get I went on the TCS website 
I downloaded one page from the instructions, but the instructions are available online. I'd never been on the TCS uh, website before, and it was quite interesting how uh, they have a lots and lots of really good installation guides on these. So uh, I, I could spend hours on that website. It was really cool, really well done. I suggest you go check it out. I've supplied uh, my own LED and uh, it works. And I'm testing out uh, the circuit. I'm testing out the resistor and there's no problem on the circuit and the resistor. So uh, I don't know what's wrong with it. I tried it uh, flipping the LED uh, both ways there because I'm not sure about the polarity, but it makes no difference. I can't get that light to go on. So I'm going to work on what I know, um, which is cleaning the, the wheels. And then we'll see what happens. So cleaning out the wheels, at least I know that. These are the two points where your, your board contacts the frame. So you want to make sure that's clean. And then there's just two screws uh, in here. And then you can release the... Um, there's a little plastic part at the um, front of the engine. It's just two little plastic clip. So you can release that. There's not a lot of effort needed to do that. And the B unit has its own um, square, square front. There's just these two little screws with their retainers on the other side. And probably the fuel tank here has to be pried out. Yeah, it just has little clips, just like the... Um... Oh, there's a third screw here. Look at that. I'm glad I didn't try to use too much strength force on that. So yeah, so you have the two little retaining clips. And then we'll just lift this out. Nice and easy. There should be little insulators in there. On this engine, it was just easier to do it from this side. But you can see, uh, this is very, very familiar. Looks really a lot like a Backman engine. So you can just pull the two little drive shafts and the two trucks. Then you have just a motor in here with flywheels on top of everything. So that is really cool. You can see the three uh, retaining clips. So I'm going to leave those in there. Uh, I don't think the motor needs any lubrication. It uh, feels great, but we'll focus on here. This is the front truck. We're going to focus on cleaning that. This is a good design. It's uh, very reminiscent of the Backman uh, Spectrum. Um, it would be at dash, uh, dash 8 40B. So this one, I will just put just a dab of lubrication. Just a dab of lubrication on each side. And we'll call that done. I'm pretty pleased with that. And then I've got the, uh, the side frames here. I'm going to take them off. So the plastic is still soft despite uh, all these years. I actually have no clue how old these are because I never bought them new. I always bought these used. And um, that's actually my opinion on them. Uh, if you can find a set, I would just grab them. These are great. And then the wheels, you can just pull on them come out and then you can see how flimsy the contact strips are uh, next to that the backman locomotives look like really high quality so but these are just like HO scale but uh, scaled down so um, I'll take a look at these gears I'll probably just clean them with my toothbrush 
same with the axles that get clean with the toothbrush but I also use my rag so I'll run my rag on the sides like that but these although they look very flimsy and cheap they work really well so uh, I like them I, I like working on them but I'm always amazed at how cheap they look but how good they run but uh, you know what when you have the train going on the track you don't even think about that you're just enjoying yourself it took a second uh, to clean the shell since I have my toothbrush out this is something that I like to do uh, believe it or not you know if you're watching this channel for advice on scenery uh, probably not the best channel I hate uh, painting buildings and I hate them uh, I don't super hate it but uh, it's not my favorite thing and you know that's one thing uh, when you get old you don't care as much as uh, you did when you were young what people think so I'm into engines and the uh, the scenery part the only purpose for the scenery is to highlight the <laughs> make the engines look good so uh, I spend most of my time on engines so I'll just rotate it like that make sure I rotate it with the worm gear there make sure everything's turning there these my favorite part of these honestly is they are geared very slow uh, like a switcher but that means they feel very powerful so I'll put a little bit of lubrication on everything. Make sure those little contact strips are behind the wheels. And I'll just do a little bit of lubrication here and there. You don't need to go crazy. Just one drop is actually, one drop is actually too much. I'll do a little bit on the gears, but you don't have to go nuts because they have a tendency um, if you put too much uh, lubrication there, it's worse. Too much is worse. And then I'll bring the uh, the side frames back on. I just clean them too. There's only one way that they fit, so that's that. They should go just like that. They should just snap into place. I'm not gonna go too hard because I don't want to snap the little uh, little rings but uh, that's how they go I don't know if you can see on the back truck there was a little piece of scenery stuck in uh, one of the teeth so that I'll take a minute and try and remove that I could actually hear it when the engine was running so there it is that was the little bugger. There's your A unit put back together. Just gonna make sure that this little tab goes uh, under the frame and this one goes inside the frame. And then the two uh, drive shafts, they go into the flywheels. This is good, it's a lot like a Backman, but uh, it runs just a little bit better than a Backman and uh, very quiet. So there you go, I put some new uh, Kapton tape because you do not want uh, your motor contact to touch the frame. So I put some new Kapton tape on there. And then I'm gonna try it uh, DC on the bench. And then we'll go try it on the track with the, the decoder installed. I still haven't figured out what's uh, keeping the light from working but uh, if I ever do I'll let you know okay so let's uh, bench test this I like to bench test this because it tells me uh, that I put everything together right before I go on the track so yeah beautiful um, I'm using low voltage and there's very little noise so that's great I'm gonna put the decoder back on now I almost forgot this little clip that just goes on the front like that and then also also almost forgot the fuel tank it's 
the same it should just snap in there maybe I had it on backwards let's try it the other way and see wow that makes a huge difference okay so we'll put this um, so I put some new Kapton tape because you don't watch these these two motor leads uh, touching the uh, the frame you could damage your decoder and that would be bad so I'm checking both sides make sure they're aligned properly and then I'll reintroduce those little screws and then before I put the shell back on I'll be sure and test um, everything out before I put the shell back on although the shell is pretty easy this is why I don't tighten um, the second screw right away well first of all that little contact is uh, out of place so I don't want that so I'm gonna check them both because I, I didn't tighten anything there's quite a bit of play on there yet So I check both sides at the same time, making sure that everything's perfect, and then bring on that second screw. It's not bad I'm working far from the floor, so that, uh, that makes it easy. I have not lost any of these on the floor. So when I got them all the in place, then I tightened them. So that looks pretty good uh, let's go try it on the track I kind of gave up on the light but uh, the, the locomotive runs great this is step two so they're geared very low um, just like a switcher that's step three and it's nice and quiet I'm going to put the train behind it, I'm going to run it for a little bit, but so far so good. The process for running it like that is just to spread the, the lubrication around. So I don't need to run it for very long, just a little bit. But that will help spread the lubrication around and you can tell how quiet it is. That is awesome. All that's left to do is put the shell back on. pretty easy and the B unit it does have a, a forward direction there's a forward and back on the B unit and now it's time to run some trains well I hope you enjoyed the video I certainly had fun making it for you See you soon.